Chris uh, Foley. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for a chance to uh, speak to the. Um, uh, to this bill. Um, Mr Speaker, um, I'm looking forward to this bill actually going to the Commerce Select Committee because it's been some time before uh, since we've actually um, dealt with anything, a piece of legislation of, of any weight. Um, not that this uh, piece of legislation um, is of any weight because uh, when, uh, as we've said on this side of, 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 the, um, of the Parliament, uh, when you look at what it does uh, and the seven years of government that this party has had in, uh, has had behind it, uh, and the fact that we're two weeks out from an election, it really shows just how tired this government is. Uh, from a budget, sorry. It shows how. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was an election. Um, uh, just how tired this government is. Uh, because two weeks out, Mr. Speaker, from the budget, this is as good as it gets. Uh, a plan to expand the national business number out beyond what it already has uh, gone out to the public. And, and Mr Speaker, um, it is, as uh, Dr Clark said uh, in his uh, speech, a, a laudable effort to try and make um, the, the interaction with business and government as, as efficient as possible. And we've heard from both sides of the House about what kind of savings we're trying to get to make um, business um, interaction with government more efficient. Um, but some of the numbers uh, still need to be fleshed out. Uh, and you've got to think of it in the context of what is being promised and what will actually be delivered. Uh, Stephen Joyce, uh, in, his, in his opening remark, said that this piece of legislation will look to reduce the compliance cost for business uh, by about $16 million. Now, that's uh, nothing to sniff at. It's, it's a sizable amount of money. Uh, but I think small businesses in New Zealand, two weeks out from a budget, are looking more than the extension of the National Business Number Programme. Uh, and I think they'll be scratching their head and thinking, my God, is this, the, is this all this National Party has uh, two weeks out uh, from an election? Mr Speaker, I'd like to um, point out um, that uh, from a budget. <laughs> I'll get that right eventually. I'd like to sympathise and empathise with some of the things that James Shaw has said, because, uh, as he said in his speech, as a freelancer, I've experienced being a freelancer as well. Uh, and, and from time to time, uh, you can get slightly frustrated with the, uh, the, the amount of red tape and um, interaction you, you do have with government departments. Um, so we will look to the select committee to find out, uh, to flesh out, I guess, uh, some more of the details as to what will be the real benefits uh, to the sole traders, to those other small businesses who this national business uh, number uh, may, be, uh, uh, may be extended out to. Mr Speaker, um, the select committee stage is going to be very, very interesting because I do also want to touch on something that Fletcher Tabato said, um, because uh, in the regulatory impact statement, um, he talked about the um, lack of uh, information and, um, and, and, and the abundance of redaction uh, from, uh, within the regulatory impact statement. And, and that starts pretty early on uh, in the regulatory impact statement, Mr Speaker, um, because point five, uh, there's a table. Uh, and uh, for the benefit of those at home watching at 9.33 uh, on a Tuesday night, um, the, table is, uh, the line above the table says... The table below outlines the net benefits of the preferred options. Uh, and as you can see, it's all been redacted. So maybe, in the, <laughs> yes, in the words of Annette King, it says blankety blank, 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 blank. Uh, and that is the net benefits of the preferred options of this bill. What is so secret? <laughs> what is so secret that the government even wants to redact the net benefits of its preferred option of this bill? What is going on when it wants to redact the, the, net, the net benefits of, of this extension of a 13-number programme? Uh, you've got to ask some serious questions about that. Uh, Mr Speaker, there's also some uh, questions that we'll be asking around the costs that are incurred uh, in this bill. Because we've, we've heard that $60 million figure uh, from Stephen Joyce. Um, but again, in the regulatory impact statement, and if you um, let me uh, take some time to, to read 0.127, and for some reason point, the number 127 has been redacted, but the point is not redacted. I don't know what's so secret about the number 127, Mr Speaker. Um, but it goes on. I'll read it. Um, I'm assuming this is the number 127 below this redaction. Um, it says, the benefits to business of the New Zealand business number will only be realised when government agencies change their existing systems to allow centralised registration of business and maintenance of their business details through the NZBN system. 
I'll go on to the second page, which says, Government agency sees will incur costs in making these changes. It is not possible at this stage to quantify these costs, uh, and in many cases it may be possible, possible to absorb costs within the planned upgrades of agency systems. So two questions I have there, Mr Speaker, uh, for when we get to the select committee stage. Can we please get an idea of what it will cost to change the systems within these multitude of government departments? Uh, because if it's a huge cost and we're looking at saving roughly $60 million for these businesses or more, uh, then for my maths, that simply doesn't make sense. Uh, and there is a track record, Mr Speaker, of when this government gets involved in multi-agency, complicated changes to IT systems. Um, uh, well, it is true. <laughs> and if you'd like to um, dispute that, get up and take a call. But it is true. This government... This government does not have a good track record. Uh, let's look at some of the IT projects of note recently that had us bungled. Uh, the IRD. Who is in charge of inland revenue? The member just over there who said that's not true. So the member just over there that said, well, yes, you might think it's not fair, Mr Bishop, but unfortunately it's true. It's true. <laughs> so, so, well, I can, see, I can see how the member might think that's unfair, but unfortunately the, the actions of, of him and that ministry and also a, and his decisions are going to cost the New Zealand taxpayer millions more that they should not ha have to pay. Uh, Mr Speaker, there, there are also other things that have been um, mentioned by uh, other speakers and, and, and I'd like to talk, talk to the point around privacy because this regulatory impact statement also talks to that. Uh, and again, when I'm talking about the rolling out of IT programmes, this government, again, doesn't have a good track record when it comes to the privacy of private information of New Zealanders. Now, now what department was that? Oh, it's Todd McKay's department again, the IRD. Ah, the no, IRD, because, uh, of course, they let a whole list of... Uh, a spreadsheet list go just flicked out an email, the details of uh, hundreds of uh, New Zealanders <coughs> and their IRD details, IRD details just... Just nonchalantly emailed out there uh, into the public. A and then, of course, there was a the Ministry of Social Development, Mr. Speaker, where someone just wandered into one of the offices, went to the publicly available booth, and just helped themselves to a lot of information. So, there are some serious questions that need to be asked in the select committee process, Mr. Speaker, around the safeguards, around the privacy of information that we need to make sure that this government is getting right because in the past it has got it so, so wrong. Mr Speaker, this bill, uh, as I said, uh, tries to achieve a laudable um, aim of trying to make um, the um, interactions with business and government departments um, more streamlined so they can save money, therefore invest more money or pay their staff more or, or enjoy more profit. Mr Speaker, the um, example of New Zealand Post uh, has been raised by a number of speakers on that side of the House. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about one local example of where this government is saying one thing and is doing another. Because, Mr Speaker, I, had a, I held a public meeting recently about the future of the Raumati post, uh, post shop, which this government wants to close down. Um, it's a rather sizable... To bring it back yep, to I will, bill. I will. So, uh, and in the front seat of that public meeting was a local businessman who wants to make his life easier with a government department or an SOE, uh, New Zealand Post. But this government, in demanding more of a profit from New Zealand Post, is forcing the likes of community post shops in my electorate, in Raumati Beach. It's not the strongest labour safe hold area in my electorate. In fact, the guy, the businessman that spoke to me about well done for bringing up the issue, said he didn't vote for us. But he's unhappy with this government well, well. and the fact that they are extracting more profit out of New Zealand well, Post excellent. and closing down a very important piece of infrastructure in his community, the local post shop. So now he, Mr Speaker, will not be having that efficient interaction order, with government order. departments. Stuart Smith. 